Hello. Hello. Am I squared away on the microphone? You're good. Oh, thank you. Bye. <laughs> I was asking my wife. I'm on her computer. Don and I both knew the answer. We have a vacancy on this group now, don't we? We do, yes. Wait a minute. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we do. Have you talked to the mayor about it? Does he Does he know? He knows, and okay. um, he asked me for recommendations and I don't have any at this point. Okay. I've reached out to a few of my contacts for recommendations, but as of now, I don't don't have anyone in mind. Hi, John. Hello. Hey, Don. Hey, Bob. Hey, good evening. Evening.
Hey, Chip, are you there? Oh, there we go. Great. Hi, Chip. Hey, Marta, how are you? Hi, I figured it one more minute, right? <laughs> so uh, um, well, that's great. Sure, sure. <laughs> happy to ha have you here. <laughs> Marta. Hi there. <laughs> How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> well, good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you too. <laughs> I didn't know you were attending. I would have sent you all the supporting documents, but I hope you found them okay on the website. Yeah. Okay. I thought, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure whether I'm supposed to, whether it was I can't, whether the term ended today or last time, but anyway. Hey, we'll ha we're happy to see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your spot hasn't been filled yet, so you can always <laughs> change your mind. I can't. <laughs> oh, my husband would, never mind. <laughs> <clears throat> see. All right, let's get started. Uh, this is the... January 26th meeting 2021 of the Lewis Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. My name is Don Long. I'm the chair of the committee. Uh, all of the um, committee members uh, are present tonight. And in addition, I welcome the council members and members of the staff of the city of Lewis, as well as uh, guests. So we get started with <clears throat> Uh, a few announcements that I'll go through. We have a lot to accomplish tonight, so I'll go through some of these fairly quickly. Uh, the meeting dates are self-explanatory. Um, I'm sorry, let me go back to announcements for a minute. Um, we learned recently that the Georgetown Lewis Trail uh, mile markers are gonna be installed uh, early this year. Uh, this will help with the emergency management operations. I think it'll also be, um, it'll also support the Del Dot Adopt a Bike Path program, which um, is going to be, uh, will be inclusive of the Lewis Georgetown Rail Trail. I think what I've heard from folks is that there's a lot of interest in adopting that, the area of the Georgetown Rail, Lord, Lewis Georgetown Rail Trail within the city of, of Lewis. Uh, so we'll stay tuned for that to see how that uh, plays out. Uh, another announcement, uh, I think most of you know this by now, but uh, Lewis, the city of Lewis was awarded, awarded the Bicycle Friendly Community Bronze Level designation uh, once again. Uh, this certification uh, will last through 2024 uh, and that puts us in a category with only I believe only two other towns or cities in the state that have accomplished that goal. I believe Dover and Newark are the other two. Um, nothing to report on new committee members. I know we're, we're looking to replace the, uh, the position that Marta uh, was in. And um, since we don't have a full committee, I'm going to postpone the election of officers until the March meeting. Hopefully we'll have that position filled by then. And then real briefly, I sent out um, the amended uh, legislation today of House Bill 36. And basically that is an amendment to a uh, bicycle code or Delaware code in regards to a bicycle operator. Um, Essentially, all it does is it removes the sunset clause uh, that was originally uh, set for October 5th of this year. So for those of you not familiar with this piece of legislation, I'll read through it really quick. It says that a bicycle operator approaching a stop sign at an intersection with a roadway having two or fewer lanes for moving traffic shall reduce speed and if required for safety, stop before entering the intersection. After slowing to a reasonable speed or stopping, the person shall yield the right of way to any vehicle in the intersection 
or approaching on another roadway so closely as to constitute an immediate hazard during the time the person is moving across or within the intersection, except that a person after slowing to a reasonable speed and yielding the right of way if required may cautiously make a turn or proceed through the intersection without stopping. So this law has been on the books um, and the only change is the amendment to remove the sunset clause, which was originally October 5th. Uh, any discussion on that before we move ahead? I, I, one thing I would note is um, it's probably been about two years now since, um, if you remember, Senator Lopez had a, a meeting at the the library to talk about bicycle safety after you know all the additional trails, and that particular law seemed to be a real point of contention in that I think I think what people take away from it is if I'm on a bike I don't have to stop at a stop sign and um, I know I hear a lot of things about cyclists just barreling through stop signs crossing and and you know, they're not on the road. In these cases, there are stop signs that are on the trail. Mm -hmm. So who else would they be meant for? Um, so I, I know that there are some members of council. I know our police department has concerns. So I, I think it would be good to know what the committee's perspective is on that. Great, well, I'll open the floor for some discussion. So that this law is permanent now? Is that what this revision is? No, it, it would there, be. Yeah, it, it will. It will no longer sunset. It was scheduled to sunset in, in October of this year. So have they pushed that date off, or they just made it no, permanent? They're just the amendment is to remove the sunset date. Okay, which will make it a permanent law then, right? That's correct. Yeah, that's the way I read this. Yes. I have a question I'd like to ask. Um, has the, uh, have any state legislators reached out to you all as a standing committee for any uh, comments prior to this uh, legislation being introduced? Did you all have an opportunity to help shape it? I, I have not, no. no. Uh, I don't okay. think our committee Have you gone on the it. record? Okay. We have not. I, I don't know if the okay. city if the city has, but I we have not. I myself have contacted uh, Ernie on three occasions regarding the sunsetting of this law. Now, is it appropriate for this committee to do it? I don't know. Any individual can. It's a state issue, of course. Um, I have a lot of opinions on whether the law should be continued or. The sound the quality sunset, parts of it. But Pete is it Schwartzkopf last night at the Five Points meeting talked about it, and he he very clearly is not a proponent of the law, but he said that it has the the president pro tem of the Senate. The top two Democrats in the Senate are the sponsors, so um, it it very well may just kind of sail through. <laughs> So they're not concerned by any of the comments of people who say that the bicycles don't stop when they see that. I mean, they just think they can keep going and it causes cars to slow down when they shouldn't really be stopping and causing a problems for other traffic. But right. I'm not sure if the other areas in the state are seeing the, the volume of cyclists that we do and the, the conflicts, it, it, it could, very well be kind of a, a reality for us that others don't see. I've, you know what, what I can't help but think is that possibly the, um, the byway people, the byway committee and that organization, the Greenways and so forth, they might have some insight on bike usage in other parts of the state. I, I don't know that part of the state. I don't know anything about up north and the trail system, 
but I have a general understanding that there are, are trails in that area. Mary Pardon? Roth is on the call. I'm going to unmute her. And Mary, if you if oh good if, if you have any any statewide vantage that you can share, that would be great. It's never good to call. unmute me. It's just never a good. <laughs> <time>. <laughs> That's our um, I, I'm not prepared to really answer that question effectively. Um, I would say that I agree with you very much, Anne-Marie, that the issue is exacerbated in this area um, as it relates to um, trail crossings, et cetera, more than in other parts of the state only because other parts of the state, especially Newcastle County, although some of the trails do cross high roads, um, not as frequently as Georgetown to Lewis does. So um, Delaware Greenways actually is um, having a similar conversation to this and um, we haven't reached a conclusion as yet. Um, so I'm happy to share that once we do. I do know, um, and again, Anne-Marie, I would agree with you that given the, um, the sponsors of this bill, uh, that it, it may move forward faster than you think. <laughs> um, but, I, but I do also think that just in my personal opinion that it's worth having the conversation because for many of us who did attend that meeting at the library almost two years ago now it it was a very robust discussion that night um and so i think there's some pushback um feedback i've gotten is folks look at is this a um not as much from a from a cyclist standpoint as it is from um, a, a, the um, the driver and others who aren't sure what to do when they approach a crossing, et cetera. Um, but again, um, not very helpful, and I apologize for that. Um, appreciate you asking the opinion. I'll be happy to share when Delaware Greenways has a position on it. But also, um, we would very much like to hear what. Senator Lopez and Schwarzkopf and all um, have to say about it. So, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Mary. Um, we'll move on to. <clears throat> there's no, hey, is Don, there any more, any more discussion on that? Don, can you hear me? It's Chip. Yes, yes, can Chip. All right. Um, just, just to clarify, does that apply to trail only, or is that city streets too? Just intersections where there's two or more, two or less lanes at the intersection. So that would mean, uh, you know, like say Gills Neck and uh, well, I'm sorry, a traffic light changes everything. If there's a traffic light. Correct me if I'm wrong, Anne Marie. If there's a traffic light. The, the cyclist has to abide by the traffic light. They can't go through a red light. This is for a stop sign only. But it, but it does apply to city streets as, yes. yeah. and the trail also. That's what I'm just trying to. Where there's a. Right. So, so it could be 4th Street, all those four way stops on 4th Street. You could just kind of slow down. Right. Right. I just yeah. So to clarify that. The, the law, the way I guess the, the question law... I have is assuming this. Uh, can you guys hear? Yes. Hear me okay? There's a lot of distortion yes. in the audio. Hmm. My connection is Go bad. Ahead. Can you hear me okay now? That's better. Yeah, I can. now I can. I guess a question I have for the committee is, assuming this bill gets passed, which it seems likely, uh, what could we do as a town to make it safer for, for bicyclists beyond obvious sign, signage? But, you know, I think a program was mentioned, but does anyone have any concepts in terms of awareness for drivers and cyclists to... You know, one of the problems that I see uh, is that um, this area might be, we might have a very healthy eco-tourism business here where a lot of people are coming here to ride bikes, which is different than possibly up north. And because of that, kind of blend of people who are using our trails, 
using our roads. They're coming with uh, bike riding practices that are possibly not compatible with uh, Delaware law. And I think there's a huge need for public education here. I'm suggesting that. <clears throat> yeah, it is. The, the law is, I believe, the most liberal or lenient of all, all bicycle laws in the country. Uh, I don't know how, how it compares to other states, um, but I do believe we have, uh, you know, more flexible laws than, than most states. Uh, yeah. hmm. Is there, do we have a recommendation from committee members to, um, for, um, to send this to mayor and council as to far as far as a position on this amendment? Or the law, I mean, I should say. Well, what's our position? We're not, we're in favor of it ending or not ending? Well, I'm asking, that's what I'm asking, a consensus from the committee, whether we support this as, as written, we wanna make a recommendation to mayor and council. I would recommend it not, I would recommend it not be allowed to become permanent. I went through this, actually, I went through Title 21 as it relates to Bicycles for Ernie in July of 19, after the meeting you mentioned, uh, Anne-Marie. There's a lot of good things, and there's a lot of things that really are not compatible with bicycling culture as it exists around here. A lot of the, the folks I've talked to that, that are in favor of it have ridden bikes a good bit in Europe. Uh, I have had the opportunity to do that in, I don't know, six, seven countries over my career. It works there, but I don't see that the, the culture of traffic in general here in this country is not compatible with having bicycles go through stop signs. The education of the cyclists in this country who've read that and they say, oh, we don't have to stop at signs in, in Delaware. Well, I, I have been told by cyclists that, no, we don't have to stop at stop sign. Well, the, the law as it's written is fine, but it's not in practice. I do not think it is in the interest of safety to continue this part of the modifications to Title 21. There were a bunch of other things regarding bicycles that are fine. They're good, they're positive. But this one's, in my estimation, dangerous. Thanks, Bob. Well put, and I agree 100% with you. I agree with Bob. Marta, do you, do you have a, a position? Um, as a former committee member, I don't agree with the law because it's both on the parts of the bicyclists and the drivers of cars. Um, nobody seems to know what to do. And when the cars, there's some cars that will slow down and, almost, and stop, even though, even though there's a bicycle that has followed the law and stopped and come to a stop to wait for the car, the cars are doing that. So they encourage cyclists to do this. And right. I think it'd be great if bicycle, cyclists could just see the stop sign. And if there are no cars, go through. But if there are any cars in the vicinity, just stop. But they don't, so. Well, this is a good discussion. I agree with all of you. I, I, I don't support the law as written either. Um, and I think as a committee, our recommendation to mayor and council is not to support uh, the removing the um, the sunset date, but to let it expire in October. Mary put a comment in the chat saying that, okay. and I, I agree with this, that at the meeting at the library, education was a strong part of the conversation. The state police in attendance didn't feel they fully understood the law as did members of the public. So if the bill passes, is it possible to add an education component? And, and that was that was one of my takeaways is that you had multiple police officers up there wow. and they yeah. all read it differently. Yes. So if wow. the people enforcing don't even read it the same, how are those of us on bikes supposed to understand what it means? Yeah, it's yeah, it's not clear. Tim Tim mentioned this earlier today in an email conversation. This, this it's not clear. The the wording could be uh, more concise for sure. So. Um, Don, it's, yeah. to, to go on that, and you, you know my feedback from previous meetings, until it says stop and you have to stop, 
which is very clear, there's going to be uncertainty. Sure. I don't care how they work it or what they put in there. Stop means stop. Yeah. When it's left, when it's left up to the judgment of the cyclists to make that decision at the intersection, you have issues. There's going to be issues constantly. So there is. I don't care what yeah. kind of wording you put in there. People are going to interpret it differently, and there you can confusion, and you're back to the same where you are. So again, I agree with what Bob says. Well, I'm, could could I have a motion from the committee as far as making a recommendation to mayor and council uh, that we we don't uh, we are not showing any support for the continuation or of this, let me put, put that another way recommendation to mayor and council um, that we don't support the amendment to House Bill thirty six which would remove the sunset clause. I have a motion. Do you want a motion? motion? That the Lewis Bicycle Pedestrian Committee does not support the uh, repealing of the sunset law of House Bill 36. Second. Okay, so move. Thank you. And we Marie, do have a comment in the chat. I was going to say, Sumner had a question I had, which is can Lewis, as a city, can we enact stricter laws? So the answer is technically yes, but I think when you're talking about something like stop signs, having, there's already enough jurisdictional confusion over which segments of the trail are Lewis versus state parks versus um, Del Dot. So I think if we had different laws, then especially as it relates to stop sign, it's only just going to create confusion. So technically we could. Okay. Well, that's- Anne-Marie, that, you re that raises a question that I have, your comment. May I, may I ask a question, Don? Of course. Uh, is, do you know if uh, Denrec in, their, in the state parks where they have trails and they have stop signs, I assume, on those trails? Bob, is that correct? My question is, uh, do do, do this does the state in the state parks expect the cyclists to does stop mean stop in the state parks or are they allowed to be interpreted as loosey-goosey as my understanding is you know, stop the stop bill them. would have, have us interpret them Tim, i I lost you on that last uh, comment. I, I don't know if anyone else is having issues with your, your feed, but could you repeat that, please? Am I still on? <laughs> You're freezing up. I am? Yeah. You could write yeah, it off. Yeah, you all are frozen. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're not. You are. <laughs> I think Bob answered him, though. I think he asked whether it stopped means stop in the state park, and I think Bob said it does. In the yes. state me, park. That's my understanding. I'm not an official. I'm a volunteer. But that's okay. what I've always that was my, been told. You, that's my understanding, okay. too. When I, I worked as a trail planner for state parks, and that was my understanding when I worked there. So, and Bob, Bob, how do you see that in okay. practice, though? Are, are the cyclists tend to adhere to that or do you still kind of blowing through the stop signs in the state park? They in general blow through them. I see them looking more. I mean out in the park you're virtually always on a trail. You're not on the road much. And it's all frozen. A lot of kids running around that kind of stuff. People seem to be a little more cautious and they at least look when they're coming up on a automobile road. So. All right, thank you. Let's move on to uh, approval of minutes. We have minutes from uh, two meetings from last year, January 28th of last year and November 17th. Um, have committee members had a chance to review the minutes and are there any uh, edits or additions or corrections? Fine if, with me. If not, is there a motion to is there a motion to approve the minutes? 
Okay. Move to approve the previous minutes mentioned in the agenda. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, we'll move on to uh, old business. Um, as I mentioned already in the announcements, the Bicycle Friendly Community uh, Bronze Level Award uh, was given to the city of Lewis uh, in November. And um, we, uh, we have not done any types of outreach or education or any type of press release regarding that award. I think it would be something that we, we would be beneficial to, high, to showcase and highlight the city's achievement and the committee's achievement on, on, that, uh, on that award. Uh, do I, is there a committee member that would want to step up to write a press release or would I, is there someone from the city that could help us with that? I, I could help you with that. Okay. Just get, give me a deadline and tomorrow. Need to nudge me. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I mean, this is just, just has to be a few sentences, you know, just to acknowledge and get it out there. Um, Cause it is quite an achievement when you look at the state, we're one of three, three towns that are, um, receive that award. So, and moving on um, to uh, biking, the biking ambassador program. Um, there was, there's an attachment to the agenda. If you have a chance, you can open up that attachment if you haven't already. And we'll go through uh, a draft document. Uh, this document represents information that we've gleaned from the Park Watch program uh, directed by uh, Captain Steve Savage, uh, information that Bob Fisher has put together, uh, some information that I've uh, gleaned from the Hilton Head South Carolina uh, Biking Ambassador Program, and then information from the City of Lewis Police Department that, that was provided. Uh, Bob and I put this into an outline format to sort of get us get the discussion started. Uh, we have a lot of information to fill in, a lot of um, planning to do to, to launch this program, uh, uh, you know, maybe later this year, if possible. Uh, I just like to open up the floor for some discussion uh, based on the, the current outline. And starting with, let's, let's go to the outline, uh, I'm sorry, the Roman numeral two under structure. And we'll talk about uh, the structure of the organization or not organization, but the biking ambassador program itself. Anyone may, uh, may jump in. I was just gonna say, Anne Marie and I had talked about this in terms of the partner, the police department, the partnership coordination there. I don't see anyone from the police department, but. And re indicated that she would help coordinate whatever might be needed. I think, Don, you and I talked maybe about the need for maybe background checks, thing, things of this nature. Um, so whatever support you might need from, the, from that side can be organized through support from the city. Okay, that's great. That's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, I think it's crucial, uh, based on the conversations I've had, I think it's crucial that the police department is, is very much involved with this program. Uh, we would like to have their, um, you know, their blessing, their support and their coordination with, um, with running the program. Um, you mentioned background checks, you know, uh, identifications, uh, IDs for, for, uh, for, for the volunteers, um, training, essentially looking at how we would train volunteers um, moving down to Roman numeral three, looking at the roles and responsibilities, uh, based on the park watch program, uh, roles could be where it's an active role where you have actual contact with riders and pedestrians, providing information, guidance, um, uh, or maybe more as, as, you know, passive role as a, a trail store by just as you're riding or, or hiking, you're, you're, you're reporting things that you might find that might be an issue for, for trail users. 
I think there are a lot of responsibilities with assuming the role of an ambassador. Uh, it's really being an extra set of eyes for the police department and for the city of Lewis, uh, looking for you know safety issues, reporting emergencies, um, and obviously providing uh, the, the public safety element and of education and awareness. I think one of the mo most important functions would be just providing people with, with directions and maybe with maps and also um, seeing people that are riding down Second Street the wrong way as you know as Chip, Chip mentioned a few times or riding on the sidewalk across the drawbridge. Those are things where we could position ambassadors to help to um, make the flow of cycling and, and, and walking through town a little, a little better. Um, those are some ideas. Um, we see, and, and Bob, please, please jump in at any time if you'd like to, um, to add, because I know you put a lot of work into this, or any member here. Okay, Don, I'll just, I'll go ahead. First off, what you all have provided is excellent. I mean, it is a great outline, and I think it's a, it's a very important thing that we as a committee adopt and work with the police and go ahead and move forward with it. Um, I do want to point out, and I spoke to you one day about this, I did a observation at numerous places. I sat on Second Street. I sat at the corner of Gills Neck and Savannah right by the bridge. I sat on the trail at Kings Highway. I sat on the trail at Savannah Road. And just making observations. And I know, I. I don't know that we have any feedback from Hilton Head as far as what they encounter. And I don't know if Bob has any feedback on what he actually encounters in the state park. But what we have going on in the city is, is unbelievable. It, it really is. I sat there on a Saturday afternoon, December the 12th from 1 to 2.30 at Gills Neck and Savannah Road. 25, that's an hour and a half span of time. 25 people riding their bike across the bridge on the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, 20, in, in an hour and a half, 25. Bikes crossing against the light, 11. Um, cars turning right on red, 12. Bikes turning on red, 26. And the, most of those were coming up Gills Neck Road and they spin right on to Savannah Road. Mm. As long as there's no traffic, they just, red light, go right on through and keep on going. And that's just an example of what, I have other stuff documented down there that I did in I, each place. Cause I just wanted to see and let everybody know what we are, what what's out there. Was well, that 100% supportive of this uh, program. I think it's a great idea for us to do, but it's not like you're just going to be handing out maps. And if that's what our intention is, then so be it. Yeah. And, and that brings up a good question. I mean, and was that, was that in a weekend chip or was that? A, that was a Saturday afternoon. Saturday, it, was, okay. it was December the 12th. Yeah. And it happened, to be, it happened to be in that span. It was a beautiful day, probably 50 degrees. So, I mean, there were people, pedestrians, and, and one more thing on that too, pedestrians not using crosswalk, and a lot of this came from the Graves parking lot over to Striper Bites, and from the canal front parking lot over to where the puzzle store is. Yeah. It's just cut, they come out of that parking lot and just cut right across the road. Yeah. 44 people, pedestrians, not using crosswalks, cutting across the street. Yeah, and then I, an hour and a half. I, I, find it, I find it amazing. I, I don't know if, if a lot of people that are that live in Lewis or that visit here maybe aren't familiar with, with say life in an urban environment and how critical it is that you use crosswalks when you're crossing a street or and abide by the traffic lights. But I'm amazed too at how many people actually just cross the road wherever they see fit and not even worrying about traffic or whatever and how unsafe that is. Um, and, and that brings me to 
the role as a an, as an active ambassador, how we do interact with folks that are doing those types of things, and and where, you know, what how can we play that role, and 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 do we, or is that better is that role better played by a police officer? That's my biggest question about about the right. program. This we is don't want to be crossing guards. guards right? pardon, pardon me. Go ahead. Go we ahead, don't want to be crossing guards. No. No. Bob? This is something that comes up occasionally in the, the four years that I've been in the park watch in the state park. And it's out there, it's kind of left individually up to the volunteer how much he wants to get into it. Compared to some, I don't butt heads with people. It's not my job, first off. You know, you, you don't have, I believe the technical term is constabular powers to do anything, but it's recommended and most people abide by it. When you do have to approach somebody for something safety wise, it's not, it's not like they're breaking the law. It's, Hey, you know, this is really not safe. We'd appreciate it. You know, if instead of blasting by a family with three little kids at 20 miles an hour on the elevated portion of the trail on the Gordon's pond trail, Slow down, tell them you're coming. Don't just drive by and scare the hell out of them, that kind of thing. Um, most of what I do is giving directions. People ask me, where's a good place to go eat? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. That that may be a, <laughs> that's a personal choice. Where do you tell but, them, Bob? Where do you tell them to, to go eat? <laughs> well, I sent some folks to Striper Bites because they wanted fish tacos one day, but I found out uh. it was closed when I went there later in the day. So, <laughs> but there are folks out there that do it that, well, there's one individual that rides his bicycle on a trail that's closed to bicycles because he wants to go out there and see if any other bicycles are there. What so, kind of trail is that? Uh, it's it's an unmarked trail that runs roughly from uh, the end of Transmitter Road, give or take a quarter mile, over to the Walking Dune Trail. It's unpublished. It's actually an old cable right away from the military days. I gotta <laughs> imagine that doesn't go over well when somebody comes up to you on a bike and says, "You're not allowed to be on a bike on this trail." <laughs> yeah, but you've got your green shirt on, so you're the authority in the world. So <laughs> I would not, I would not, sorry, Marta. No, I was just wondering, is there a way, way for the police officers to go and enforce it now and then to make it clear? Because well, I, I did it one time, I saw two women walking on the side of the road that they should be walking on, but following one of their children on a little bicycle. <laughs> and I said to them, that's really dangerous, you know, little boy on this side where cars can, you know, hit. And of course that I just got this like, I know, thank you, thank you. Uh-huh. No, you know, they just they just didn't want to hear it. And um, it's not my place or my job either. So they don't take look upon that well. Of course maybe an ambassador of vest might help a little bit. I don't know. The chief told somebody once not to ride their bike on the sidewalk on the bridge and she not so politely <laughs> responded, F you and he was the police chief in uniform. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One thing that we are given in the park, um, we don't get radios or anything, but we have been given a sheet of phone numbers. We've got every ranger's cell phone number, the cell phone that's carried by the duty ranger in the park. Uh, if you want to get hold of somebody, theoretically, you can. In four years, I've used it once that because a car stalled on the road. And, I was too wimpy to push it off to, to the side and they needed help. So the duty ranger came out and shoved it with his SUV. So, but that I would think if we go with something like this and should be provided to people, a way to knowingly get in touch with the police should something come up right. and get a response. But it needs to be used judiciously. I've never used it when somebody's got their dog off a leash or something. But the right, jaywalking right. is pretty serious. I think the jaywalking is so dangerous, especially when there's two crosswalks very close <laughs> to each other across from the puzzle book store, you know. Yeah. Again, the environment out in the park that I'm accustomed to is very different 
than it would be in the city, mm -hmm. in town. The, the, the traffic crossings are not nearly as frequent or as dangerous. There's not, not nearly as much interaction of vehicular traffic, be it motor vehicle or bicycle. And of course, right. there's no, no control on pedestrians at all in the park. They just wander wherever, whenever. <laughs> except a couple places I can think where they actually have crosswalks. One that I can think of, so. Uh, Anne-Marie, uh, I'm wondering if you could provide us with any information as to the plans with the, the seasonal police department. Uh, I'm sorry, the seasonals hired for the summer right. season for the police department. Um, so right now the chief has requested 10 um, in his, oh budget submission. We have not finished putting together the budget. Um, I believe that number will be somewhere between two and 10, <laughs> probably not 10. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that's all. Um, the budget meetings will start on February 5th. So we'll present the draft budget to council next Monday, and then they'll take the next six Fridays and, you know, nip and tuck and <laughs> wave their magic wand to find more money. All that. Okay. I have a question. John. Would the ambassadors be stationed at certain intersections or high traffic areas on like deliberately, like have somebody assigned to a certain area? I think that's a would be a good approach. Yes, I mean, uh, as you know, Chip just pointed out, there are some problem areas in in town, in particular. Uh, I think the corridor, in particular, that I think needs attention is between American Legion Road and Gills Neck Road on on Savannah, where people are often confused about how to make that connection from the American Legion Rail Trail to the um, to the Rail Trail on on Gills Neck. Uh, and that's an area we'll, we'll talk about later in, in our discussion today uh, under a different agenda topic, but that's, that's, that's how I see it, John. Yes. Uh, is there any other discussion uh, in regards to the ambassador program? I see in the chat that I already have a volunteer that wants to sign up, so that's good. <laughs> we just need a, a few more. Um, so I, I think one of the important elements here is to see what involvement, the way I see this, what involvement will the city of uh, the police department have in this program? And um, also um, how active will the seasonals be uh, and will they be on bicycles this, this summer? Uh, and could they either supplement or uh, is that program more effective? That, these are questions I'm just throwing out to, for us to think about. Also, how come the, the city doesn't have like a, a volunteer police force? A lot of small cities have volunteer police, like volunteer firemen. I don't know of anywhere in Delaware. Tim and I just bore witness to that. O Ocean View does. Oh, they do. Yeah. So we we actually bore witness to that this past week. Yeah. Tim and I went on a little field trip, and uh, I forget they are. I mean, they support sort of uh, like the reception and um, that kind of thing. Yeah, communications. But yeah, they were they were civilians. Yep. Is yeah, that's right. So. Were they volunteers though, or were they paid yep. civilians? Okay. Volunteers. Yep. And from what I from what I understand, even describing Tim, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they were some twenty four hour twenty four seven volunteers. I don't think right. uh, they had sufficient sufficient bandwidth uh, for that. I don't remember the twenty four hour. Uh, I know they're there for at least 12 hours, seven days a week, and uh, they are volunteers uh, that handle that. All their dispatching is done by volunteers. They also usually work like parades, crowd control, traffic, things like that. 
for special events. And Don, one other point about the seasonal officers, and in my memory was they were also on bicycles. That's correct. Which they were dead in the community and it's a very visible thing. And I know it's a budgetary thing, but Anne Marie, you gotta find a way to get 10. Okay. <laughs> because just, just the presence is gonna be helpful. We have so many intersections and things going on, but you put them out, that many out on bicycles, I think it's a great thing. And I know budgets are a tough thing. So ask for 10 and get half, it'd be great. All right. Well, as far as this draft document goes, um, the, uh, what I'm hearing is um, from the committee is that we need to flush out more of the details. Um, so I'm, I'll put, put it out there for the committee members to look over the document over the next, uh, say three to four weeks and provide me say by, by March 1st, any comments that you may have uh, or, or additional details that we can um, add to the document to continue to, to, to move this move this along. Um, if there's no, no questions, we'll move ahead to the next item on the agenda. Any more questions about the ambassador program? Let me double check the chat, see if there's any more volunteers that have signed up. No, nope, not yet. Yeah, along those lines, Udon, I, I would just, from my own comments, just say that, yeah, probably the next important things to think about are um, kind of what John brought up is where do we anticipate you would put them, you know, the, the ambassadors, where are they most effective? And that would probably then drive how many you might need. Uh, and then that would drive the scheduling of, you know, how many would you need on each schedule? And then therefore how many volunteers overall might you need to make it a viable program? That's a good point. Yeah, location and uh, numbers. Uh, I think there's also a question that came up at the last meeting that I overlooked for uh, just is uh, the uh, issue of liability, if that is an issue and how we uh, approach that. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll wait to hear from the city on, uh, on that if, the, if that's a, uh, an issue we need to uh, consider. All right, moving along, um, uh, item C3 uh, under the old business, our trail foliards. Uh, this has been on the, been in discussion now for several meetings. Um, we, we have um, uh, had some external discussions as far as uh, costs associated with this. Uh, whether the city does the work or the or the state Del Dot agency does the work, uh, and I, I think now it's sort of at a um, sort of standstill as to where we where we where we are with this. So the the one thing I I can report is that the city would have to do the work, and um, it would be reviewed by both the planning section and their bike ped program and the railroad section since it's the railroad right of way. What I don't have is a cost estimate for install you know removing and installing. I I asked for you know, if they have numbers from any anything that they've done recently, and I haven't gotten a response to that one. Okay. Is the work yeah. done by volunteers? Um, I don't think it's the the labor that that would cost. I think it's the materials. I, I mean, I it it's probably not a very expensive, um, a very expensive project. Case. Right. So you could probably use the bollards that are there. It's a matter of um, cutting into the concrete. I don't know if you could use the bollards that are there. If they're the ones that are wooden, the, the, the new alignment would be the yellow. Are they made of metal? Don, do you happen to know what the insides of those are made from? I don't. I don't know what the inside is, no. Uh, some um, have a hinge, they fold down so track yeah. vehicle, emergency vehicle could cross over right. them. So they have um, to have that feature. Yeah, yeah. Who put up the rotating um, reflector signs by the uh, trails now? Del Dot did those. Del hmm. Is that a trial program or is that a 
a new standard for them? I, I think it's being used at, at, at bike crossings um, uh, instead of installing, uh, you know, a flashing beacon type thing. It's, uh, it, it really does catch your attention. I'm thinking about getting they're, one. I'm getting, thinking about effective. getting one for the top of my helmet. So as I mm -hmm. ride, it flickers around. Uh, but yeah, they've installed them at the um, Nassau, oh, sure. Nassau Bridge or Nassau uh, Road Crossing. Right. As well as the uh, Savannah Road Crossing. Do you know if they have any plans to put them uh, at King's Highway at that crossing? I don't know. Not that they've yeah. mentioned. Usually if they're planning to do something in town, they contact us. I see. Yeah. Amory, in terms of the costings, I mean, are we relying on someone else to give us that th those cost estimates? No, we can price it out. Um, I just thought that maybe Delbot had something recent because they, you know, ha have recently done a lot of this work. Because as, as I recall, you, this committee essentially voted to support the idea of moving to the standard ballers and we as a deferred action, would this committee want us to put this back on the agenda um, to consider in front of council? What? What was the, I, I'm trying to think of what the actual staff, or I'm sorry, council um, action was. I, we took no action. Because, so I'll have to look at the know, council. We didn't know enough in terms of who was responsible right. and what the costs were. Okay. Um, we could put it back on another council We would agenda. need to know the budget still, because I mean, no council is going to vote for, you know, a bridge to nowhere. Um, so I think we need to know budget, but is it still the desire of the committee to go, to have that considered to move to the standard Dell dot design? Andrew, I, I was in on that meeting uh, when it, it was brought up and the safety factor was one big issue. Not, it wasn't, it wasn't, the budget was part of it, but mm -hmm. the safety issue was a huge part of that conversation. Chief Spell spoke and other people on the council spoke and they felt that the double bothered slowed people down more than a single. And that's right. why they were proponing to, one of the reasons to keep the doubles. Well, I know as we as a committee went to go singular, which is the standard. So I'm just throwing that out there. But the no, understood that. The issues. I guess that's my question. Uh, it may very well get voted down in front of committee for reasons, as you said, for safety or otherwise, but do you, is it your desire for us to put that back on the agenda for consideration? Are you asking the committee or the, the city? I'm, yeah. I'm asking you guys, yeah. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in agreement to have this, back on the agenda of the mayor and council, yes. Uh, any other members of the committee? Yeah, I agree. I, mean, I agree. The thought processes then to me, have the mind haven't changed. Okay. Take another shot at it. How about you, John? Are you? Are yeah, I'd like to go to the single ballad. Okay. Because I think technically we deferred action, so uh, Man Marie, do we do they do these guys need to vote on it again or no? Okay. So it, I think it sits in council's court at the moment. Old business, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So I he specialize in that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The February agenda is gonna be a big one. <laughs> sure. All right, let's move along. Um, the next item on the agenda and under old business is the sidewalk central program, which uh, I'll talk more about this later, but uh, just a, a quick update. Um, we we reinitiated the program last, I guess it was last March, uh, ran out of paint, but we did finish the central business district uh, with stencils uh, mainly around the drawbridge, uh, second street, as far down as American Legion road we found a paint that holds up uh, based on what I've noticed recently walking down the uh, second street, uh, the sidewalks, the stencil seems to be holding up very well uh, as opposed to the, um, 
the black ink we used in, in, in previous years. So that's good. We'll be resupplying with more paint. And then I'll be connecting with the city staff in late March when the weather starts to turn uh, and uh, start that program to expand it beyond the central business district. Uh, any members of the committee that would like to come out and, and support that effort, uh, just let me know and it will, I'll help uh, coordinate this and uh, you can come out and just help with, uh, with the stenciling. The city folks will be doing the actual painting, but we'll be identifying the locations. And we have a list, Marta put together a list last year, I guess, I guess or maybe the year before, of some of those critical intersections and she, uh, she weighted the intersections based on usage. So some of the ones that are a priority we're gonna tackle first and then we'll move, move from there. Uh, no, uh, no questions about that, we'll move on to new business. Under new business, uh, I wanted to, to just have a brief discussion about the about e-bikes. E um, there seems to be some, uh, there's been some internal discussion as well as external discussion about what an e-bike is. Does the, does this, um, trying to pull up my, my document here while we're, while we're talking, here it is. Uh, I, this was attached to the agenda. Uh, this is some information that I pulled together from, uh, from my state resources. And you can see under Title 21, there's, there's a provision with a definition of a bicycle. And I'm only bringing this up because there's been some confusion. What is an e-bike? What's allowed on the trail? And um, so this explains it fairly straightforward. You know, it's 750 watts. It must have pedals and it cannot be, it cannot go faster than 20 miles per hour. Uh, so again, it has to be a pedal assist uh, and it can be a two or three wheeled vehicle. I mean, the rider, the rider has to be less than 170 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes. I'd like to chime in on that real quick. Sure. Um, as we all know, e-bikes are, are coming more and more and more. You see, I spoke to Bride uh, down at Lewis Cycle, and um, they're making up around 5% of his sales right now just on e-bikes and he projects that to double. And if you do ride around, there are a lot of e-bikes around right now. There really mm -hmm. are. And um, during a council workshop or something, one of the members on the council um, stated that they were not allowed on trails on the, on the bike trail which is inaccurate, but then there again comes to confusion about bicycle laws and which, which kind of what you're bringing up. Yeah, so that's another reason I brought this up because there, there was some, there was a, some discussion and confusion about what was allowed and uh, any, any trails that are maintained by state agencies, Del Dot, uh, Del, Delaware State Parks, uh, and I believe and I don't know where the city stands exactly on this, but as, as far as uh, whether uh, they have adopted this, uh, you know, this provision in their code. But uh, that the definition of e-bike uh, is uh, is upheld for uh, for the usage of any of the maintained trails by Del Dot and Delaware State Parks. Um, and. Again, I don't know if the city's taken a position on this. Uh, we certainly, I believe as a committee support, uh, support the law as is, and would like to see that um, to apply to the city, city trails as well. May I ask a question, please? Sure. Um, Don, regarding the e-bikes, uh, what is the maximum speed that they can go? 20 miles per hour. Okay. And is that compatible with the uh, postage speed, posted speed limit for the trails? I don't know of any. Posted There's no speed posted limits. speed on the trails. That's and and a lot well, of a lot of people on road bikes go a heck of a lot faster than twenty. 
Mm -hmm. Well, they might go in sprints faster, but I doubt if they're, you know, riding great distances at that rate of speed. Uh, but nonetheless, but the, you know, this gets back to I think that bill that you all discussed, bill number thirty-six in the very beginning, and the whole idea that a motorized bike, an e-bike, uh, receives the same consideration and benefits as a manually pedaled bike, you know, is, is, is kind of curious, I think. And I think possibly speaks to a concern that I would have about bill number 36. I mean, they have at that, that rate of speed alone, they would have, um, there would be great consequences with them commingling in space that is also occupied by vehicular track by motorized in the traditional car kind of sense kind of vehicles occupying the same space. Mm -hmm. I suspect that the reason the state law looks at it the same is because it's really it's power assist. It's not a, a powered bike. It, the the battery doesn't take you anywhere unless you're pedaling. So it's not it's not like a um, motorbike where you turn it on, you rev it up and and go. It, it's you're still pedaling and, and the battery doesn't propel you unless you're pedaling. Uh, that's not true. I a lot of them have ranges where without pedaling, you can go 10, 15 miles without pedaling. Okay. You can go longer when you pedal. Okay, because the ones the ones that I've seen really advertise as power assist. Yes, it's power assist because you can't go endlessly, but you can go certain distances without pedaling. It depends on the size of your battery. <clears throat> I just like to comment too on um, uh, speed limit on the trail. While there aren't yes. speed limit signs that say whatever, where the information booths are and on those printouts that they put up there, they recommend not going more than 12 miles an hour. And it's it's it, you you see them wherever they have the the boards up there, but there's nothing on the side of the trail that says. 10, 12, 15, 20 miles an hour, but it's a recommendation. So uh, Chip, what boards are you speaking about that you say where the, that speed is posted? I don't wanna use the wrong words for it. And the place, first place that I noticed it was at the end of the uh, Georgetown Trail right there at uh, Route 9 when I stopped and I looked to see what they had put up. Okay. So wherever they have one of the, I don't, I don't know the proper word for what they are. Though. Oh, I know. I know what you mean. The three-sided bulletin boards, whatever you want to call them. And there's like probably one at the library, but I've never read that. Okay. I'm not saying it's there, but that's, that's one place I know is said it there. And I, I observed another one. I don't want to tell you wrong. That one could have been by the senior center. There's a sim, something similar to there also. Okay. Let's say on there, 12 miles an hour which like I said, for, for just a bicycle is easily attained. Coach, you were saying that that's, it's worded as recommended though. <laughs> Andrew, don't hold, don't hold me to that, please. There is right. something on there about 12 miles an hour, whether it's there, recommended. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a look, I'll take a look. Is, yeah, is, it the etiquette? is it the etiquette guidelines? Yes. That I think that's exactly what it okay. is. Okay, yeah, it, it, and it's written so small. I mean. <laughs> oh, you gotta be off the bike to read <laughs> yeah. this. There, there, there's not, you're certainly not gonna see it if you speed by it 16 <laughs> miles per hour. I agree, I agree. I think they put put that sign up near the bakery. So maybe people that stop at the, stop at the bakery will get a chance to read it. <laughs> Good point. All right. Well, that's um, maybe we'll give that's... the ambassadors radar guns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
along with the badges. <laughs> I don't know if that discussion clarified things or made things more confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move on to um, uh, uh, item under the committee goals for 2021. Uh, it's, it's as an attachment in the agenda. Uh, if you could pull that up now, uh, I want to go through the first couple, the first section fairly quickly. Um, this is the Lewis Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee goals for 2021. And just to preface the discussion, I know some of these are are heavy lifts and we may not accomplish these in one year, but I basically wanted to put together the items that we've discussed uh, since I've been chair, since late 2018 in one document. So we could start to chip away at some of these. I know some of these have been circulating for you know a couple of years now and we've made uh, some baby steps towards um, towards uh, making some of these improvements. Uh, I'll go through, let's go through the outreach and education. I'm hoping, you know, things turn around maybe by the end of the summer and we can get back out there with some outreach events. Uh, maybe we can launch the bicycling ambassador program. Uh, we could do the bike bell uh, pop-up event again, where we distributed bells uh, to folks uh, at the trailhead by the library. Uh, again, just to encourage better communication on the trails. It was really well received. I think we installed over 50 bells uh, last uh, year, or I should say 2019 when we did that. Item four under the outreach and education. This has been a dream of mine uh, is to create a traffic garden uh, at the Shields Elementary School a parking area or at the H.P. Uh, Smith Park, George H.P. Smith Park. Basically, this is sort of what we did for the bike rodeo uh, during the, uh, the Lewis Police Department night out. This would be more of a, you know, permanent painting on the, on the parking lot, um, sections of the parking lot where it provide, provide uh, kids uh, a chance to actually practice their road skills and their bicycle skills uh, in a safe environment. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, this would be a, l a larger lift would require us to really do some more research on this, but it has been done for schools. And I think it would be a great program to launch and have at our elementary school uh, in town here. Uh, we can talk about more, uh, more about that later. I have to get some more information together uh, to support a, a design. Uh, in Don, the meantime, have you talked to anybody at the school district? I have not talked to anyone uh, recently in the school, um, at the school district, no. I mean, because they're building the, the new school now. So, you know, it might be a good time yeah. to, to start that discussion. That would be great. If you have a, a, a contact that you would recommend, let me know and I will reach out to them. I happen to know the architect at Shields. <laughs> <laughs> I was I looking at you. <laughs> great. Tom, what did you call that program at the school? What did you call that? It's a traffic garden. Traffic. Garden. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you've ever been to the bike rodeo, a portion of the Lewis night out, uh, which the police department holds in early August, um, right. our committee sets up a temporary traffic garden using cones, uh, modular stop signs, a lot of chalk, <laughs> where we yeah. set out, set up a, a course in the parking area uh, at George H.P. Smith Park and allow the kids to, uh, and, and partnering with ZelDOT, they provide the bikes and the helmets and, uh, and some of the supplies. Um, they, they run through a course, it's really popular. Uh, we, of course, we couldn't do it in 2020. 2019 was very successful. Uh, we even had some adults go through the program too. So I think it's a great way to build skills. And if it was at a school where, where students had regular opportunities to practice their skills, whether just instead of just one, one, one annual event, this would encourage more kids to get out there and feel roadworthy, ready to go out on the road sure. and, and tackle, tackle traffic. Uh, and, you know, we're looking at probably third and fourth graders is the way I, I see targeting, targeting, that, targeting that age group. We've done programs there before, uh, you know, the ABCs of cycling, the air brakes, and um, what's C stand for? I forgot. Cussing, cussing. 
<laughs> no, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, the basics of, of, of cycling, you know, how to kids to pump up a tire, uh, how to mount a bike, how to adjust the seat, that kind of thing. Um, and then take them to a quick course with, uh, with something similar to the bike rodeo, but, but a more abbreviated thing. So anyway, again, that's, you know, that's one of my, uh, would be one of my passions that I would love to see that uh, that program develop. Uh, I have one the, more question real quickly, mm -hmm. real quickly, Don. You may, uh, are there any, uh, are these traffic gardens in any of the local schools in this county? Uh, if anyone was curious to go visit it, is there a traffic garden in this area? I am not aware of any. Okay. Um, but Thank I, you. I will forward more information uh, as I, I have to go through my files. I do have examples of what, what one would look like. Thank um, you very much. Sure, sure. Um, I've got so many documents open, I'm trying to find the right one. Here we go, okay. <laughs> Uh, and number five under outreach and education would be to look at the bicycle and pedestrian mapping guide and, and look at any options for redesign. I know we've redesigned it a couple times. Uh, we have to decide whether we want to move ahead with, with a redesign and a printing for this year. Uh, Chip, if I'm not mistaken, you said your, your inventory was, your calculation was there's, there's six boxes, which is 3,000 left. And I, I have a box in my garage, which I distribute. So okay, uh, I'm going to say by the start of summer, they'll be depleted. Wow. Because uh, that, that, I'll probably give another one to uh, Lewis Cycle and the Sea Green. And there, there's, there's two boxes there. So it's a box a month from now, which is easy. We go through that easily. As soon as the weather pops. Well then, uh, I, then this, let's look at the map. Then and we'll, I, my, my task I'm putting out for the committee is to to grab the map and also for council members and any anyone that's listening in tonight, grab the map, take a look at it, see how we we would want to to tweak it, improve it, uh, moving forward, and we can get that uh, in the works and have it done by, you know, by May or uh, you know early June at the latest. I think the just, map is the map and guide has evolved in the last few years. I think it has improved each time we've uh, we've each iteration. So uh, take a look at it and 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 provide me with some feedback before the next meeting is my ask. Yeah, real real quick on that, Don, and you've done a great job on those maps, by the way. But again, it's a great time for us to start to stress safety and not only be d d bicycle friendly but safety and lawfully and anything that we do when we put out there, whether it's the maps, social media, through the chamber of commerce or whatever, we want you to come and walk and bike, but we want you to do it safely. And, and by the laws and safely. And it needs to be promoted right through. So that's just one part yeah. of, of our map program that it needs to be stressed. Okay, great, great. And Mary Roth has just uh, sent a chat saying that um, as discussed in the past, Delaware Greenways will help support our efforts uh, with revisions and, and, uh, and redesign yeah, if we decide to go that route. Excellent, thanks, Mary. Uh, well, the, the existing map has your responsibility as a bicyclist in one of the pages. It, it does, you're right, John, I know. We, you might want to highlight something or make it bold or whatever, you know. Exactly. That's Mention a good point, John. Yeah, I think or that's like, a good lead, point. Lead with it. Yeah. I think the safety piece and the law, the, the law part that of you all, Chip and, and all of you that brought up, uh, I think it would be important to, to highlight that on the, on the guide somewhere. Uh, great. Okay, we'll move on to <clears throat> the bicycling and pedestrian improvement section of this document. Um, we've already discussed number one, sidewalk stenciling. Uh, we've had some discussion over the last two years about placing uh, silent policemen in high pedestrian traffic areas. Uh, these are four that, that we've identified over the last uh, couple of years. Um, 
you know, some some of the the placements would be determined by the you know by well by Del Dot basically because these are all state state uh, owned and maintained roads. <clears throat> so we would have to have their approval for for the placement of these. Um, they would have to look at the intersections and see uh, as far as turning radiuses and things like that and how well they, they could be adapted for those areas. Uh, I'm sure there's others. Uh, right now, I believe there's only one, uh, act, one, active, one active silent policeman uh, down on um, 2nd Street and Savannah, Savannah, Savannah Road. I'm not sure what happened to the one across from the, from the post office. It seems to have disappeared. I'll find out. That one used to get hit all the time. I know. The so it, it, it's possible that it was um, mangled. Between but there the... also used to be one down near the Dairy Queen. And I I, that I was trying to think, is that not there either? But It's not there either. Okay. Yeah. I think between the, the, the Cisco trucks and the mail trucks, the one down on uh, Front Street gets... Uh, <laughs> Uh, has a short life lifespan. So, huh. uh, I I don't know the cost of those. Uh, Anne Marie, do you know off the top of your head? They're they're, about they're not terribly thousand? expensive. Yeah. Um, Between so five hundred and a thousand dollars, maybe. I think they're under a thousand. Okay, great. Uh, I'll I'll verify, but uh, yeah, I mean we've gotten them before. Are these those signs that you all that are put in the uh, on the lane markers, is that oh, what I'm these sorry. are? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I should have I should have identified uh, what this looks like with a photo. Yeah, I so apologize. It's basically a um, it has a a rubber mount uh, at its as its foundation, and then right. a sort of a almost like a side a reflector you would see on the side of the road that reflects light, and then. A, I believe there's a an outline of a of a policeman on at the top of 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 the uh, of this, huh. and it stands about three feet tall. And it is put in the middle, like on the tra traffic, the typically, lane marker. Typically, in right. the center center lane in, in near a crosswalk, for instance, would be the ideal right. location. If you go down okay. to the Second Street Savannah Road intersection, or yeah, Savannah Road and Second Street, you'll see one. Hopefully, it's still there. Um, I don't think, well, maybe it is. <laughs> I'm not sure it is. Yes. I, yeah. I'm thinking about this because I. Yeah. It's not there. It's roadkill. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll check with Rick and find out if they took them in or something, but I'm thinking about it because I. I, I don't maybe think they it's took there. them in, in for, for snow plowing purposes or. Yeah, we had a lot of snow. Yeah, because we're getting so much snow. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I'll find out. I'll, I'll... <laughs> so so Tim Tim just just to, uh, real quickly, it's it's basically a traffic calming device. Yeah. You know, it's in the middle of the road. It 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 causes people to, in most cases, slow down, uh, and uh, it draws their attention to the crosswalk. So that's the idea behind the the silent policeman. Have you seen those ones where it's like children playing, and there's a little silhouette of a child, kind of like this, that height. But yes. more of like a sign, right? Right. Right. Thank you. I had just okay. not heard that term before about a uh, silent policeman. I wasn't familiar with that. Well, we'll uh, we'll try to locate those and find out what happened to them. Um, hopefully, they're still around. Uh, uh, item number three. Uh, there's been some discussion about improvements on the Lewis Beach side of things and. Uh, looking, uh, identifying locations for additional bike racks in town. Uh, I, I've, I've been out and uh, after some discussions with Tim and uh, with Rob Morgan, identified a few areas uh, where uh, bike racks, where the uh, uh, areas along Bay Avenue where, where uh, that could accommodate bike racks to encourage more, more cycling to the beach. Um, and that ties in with item number four, which is, I think, believe believe is under consideration now, evaluating the right of way on Cedar Avenue for improvements. Um, there's a significant right of way uh, there, and there's also a significant encroachment issue there. 
uh, that has to be addressed. Uh, but in my judgment, there seems to be sufficient space to have both parallel parking, uh, uh, a safety zone for door opening, and then have a at grade unseparated bike lane uh, along Cedar Avenue. Um, that it's a speed limit of 25 miles an hour, so an at grade non-separated bike lane would be would be would be fine. Uh, that's based on my calculations with 15 feet of extra uh, space on both sides of the existing pavement even. So, and I know there's, this is a major push up because there are some serious encroachment issues and some, uh, uh, this may be a much longer term project, but certainly one that's been on our radar as a committee for, for some time. Mr. Ritzer, you wanna comment on that since you're on that committee? No, I do not. Thank you, city manager. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we, uh, we, I think you can expect that the, um, that, well, no, I'm not going to comment. <laughs> uh, Don, Don, I will then. Um, I've been in on most of the uh, beach parking committee meetings and this philosophy also here, there is serious encroachment down there. And yeah. it's, it's an issue that we quite frankly, nobody wants to deal with. And that's the best way that I can put it. But as far as there being a right of way in encroachment, it is not only on Cedar, but it is on many, many streets. And again, we're not talking two or three feet. It is substantial. So again, I'm I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, yeah. The the right of way has been identified and staked. So if you want a, the visual of of seeing what that right of way looks like, you can walk, ride, or drive down to um, uh, to to Cedar Avenue and and look for the orange stakes, the wooden stakes along along. Uh, I think they're on both sides now. So um, they're, they're not. Uh, they're yeah. only they're only on the on the beach side. side. And, and they're on the side okay. street, so they're only going to be at the the intersections of the rights of way. They okay. didn't stake out Cedar itself, so so the stakes that are on Cedar are where the right of way with Cedar intersects with the the um, state name streets. Right, but you can true up. You can stand at one corner right. and look at another corner and see it's complimentary stake up there and you can get an idea where the right of way is. It's, it's doable. I will also say that in the last 45 days or so, uh, mysteriously, a lot of those stakes have disappeared. Uh, but uh, we do have records of where they where the stakes were placed. And if uh, I can make that information available to you, anyone on this committee, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, Tim, Yes, sir. Um, our ask would be, could you report back to us by say the March meeting of, with, there, with any developments on that front? Sure. Great. Don, yeah. just real quick on, I'm sorry, Tim. No, go ahead. Um, just real quick on what I used as my guide on the canal side of Cedar was the mailbox for a 1950 cottage. And that they pretty much define where the right of way is. Not the new homes that have been built there that have, but, but if you look and that, that cottage has been there since the fifties or whatever, and you see where their mailbox is and it's been there, and that's gonna tell you where the right of way is. That's how I did it. And there was a couple of places that had just gone up for sale where they had the survey marks for the homes also. Yeah, that's, that's helpful too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the discussion points in the chat is that there's diagonal parking allowed along Cedar Avenue, which is detrimental to cyclists because it's, uh, you know motorists pulling out of a diagonal parking spot like you know think Rehoboth Avenue is not cannot see a cyclist coming coming up uh, from behind. I know the yield is much higher with diagonal versus parallel parking, uh, but uh, it's not a it's not a good thing for for cyclists and. Uh, it would consume a lot more of that that uh, uh, of that right of way area. So, thanks for that comment in the chat, and we'll move on um, to um, 
Uh, number five, this is a, a Lewis Loop a bike concept that we talked about, I believe, maybe a year or so ago. We've mapped out a, a sort of a concept route, a two mile route through through town, more on the north um, northwest side of town, if you will. And um, this is something that we hope to 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 flesh out in more detail. Uh, one of the ideas for uh, for last year was to apply for a um, a grant through the the Delaware Bike Bicycling Council. Uh, to provide us with some funding to, to move this project forward. Uh, we didn't, didn't submit a grant application, but we hope to get um, you know, a fresh start this year and be prepared to, to uh, submit an application by the August deadline. But with that project in mind, or another project the committee may decide uh, would be uh, beneficial, uh, could be the target. Um, uh, the bike grant would uh, bike Delaware grant would provide us so the De Delaware Bicycling Council grant would provide us with some funding to develop the concept, maybe wayfinding signage, uh, and um, possibly to deal with curb cuts if that's necessary. Can you describe what you mean by a Lewis Loop? Well, that's just a a, a name that uh, that was thrown out, uh, I, I threw out because of uh, the idea that it would be a loop concept starting from the library and ending up at the library trailhead. Uh, okay. One of the routes that was looked at was going uh, through DeVries Circle, uh, down through Highland Acres. There's now a, a connecting path between Highland Acres and Mariners Retreat. development. And then heading down through Pilot Town, I always get those developments mixed up. Pilot Town Village or whatever, right. one, one of those. Ending up crossing New Road, picking up Park Road, past the university, yeah. back to Pilot Town and bringing Pilot Town back to the Lewis Georgetown Rail Trail, which then would put you back at the library. I so, understand now. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, it's roughly about a, uh, I should say, I didn't say, did I say two miles? I meant to say five miles. It's about a five mile loop, so. Okay. Thank you. And this is only to provide a safe route for cyclists yep. that maybe aren't familiar with riding in, in, in Lewis. Okay. Uh, on, in, in, in this case, we'd mostly on, on roads. In some cases, there are some, there are some uh, trails involved, but mostly it's roads. Right, thank you very much. Um, we, number six, we spoke, or mentioned earlier the, the importance of having uh, increased wayfinding signage for, for folks that aren't familiar with Lewis, how to get them from the American Legion to Gillsneck and or from Gillsneck back to the American Legion. Another, um, I think a, an, a, an easy ask and uh, with the cooperation of, of Del Dot, I think we can, we, can, um, we can accomplish this. Number seven is a much bigger a lift. Uh, again, it's something that's been on our radar for a while now. It's extending the sidewalk from New Road to Park Road, uh, looking at options, whether it's a sidewalk extension Maybe it's an at-grade uh, stone path on the canal side, and I realize there's 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 issues with uh, with right of way and private ownership. Uh, there's definitely some constraints there that would have to be ironed out uh, before we could to move to a uh, to a concept on this. May I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, you might want to talk to Mary Roth again because there is a master plan for a new road. And I believe they, it might include some kind of a, a pedestrian uh, pathway. It might, um, I, I'm not, I can't remember the details right now, but is Mary still on the call? But that's not on new road, Tim. That's on, uh, I mean, that is on new road, but I think we're talking about Pilot Town. Pilot Town Road. Mary's not on but anymore. I thought he described, I'm sorry. I thought he described from park to new road, I apologize. From new road to park on Pilot Town, though. I apologize. That's okay. okay. So I miss I misunderstood that. I thought he was only talking about along new. I apologize. 
Yeah, Tim, that's uh, just to refresh everyone's memory, there's the sidewalk ends at New Road. Yes. And then there's another, new, the newer pathway was built that parallels Park, Park Road. So making that connection somehow safely so people aren't walking uh, in the middle of Pilot Town. Yes, is, yes, is thank our, you very is, much. Is I, sure, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I have been in some discussions with Mary um, and I have offered to uh, sit on a subcommittee within the Lewis Byways Committee to look at alternative transportation options Good. Uh, within the Lewis Byway. So we'll, I'll, I'll report back to you as, I, as that develops. <clears throat> Um, a number eight uh, piano cross crosswalk markings. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to continue to review that and work with the city to to identify any areas that that need to be remarked. Um, number nine, we've already discussed uh, with the bollards. Number ten, uh, this would be you know revisiting the Savannah Road drawbridge. And looking for viable solutions. Uh, one of the considerations was uh, whether or not with a 29 foot uh, wide bridge from curb to curb, whether or not the travel lane could be reduced to 11 or possibly 10 and a half feet, <laughs> yeah. which, which would then give us uh, you know, roughly three and a half to four feet. Now this would not be a separated bike lane. Uh, mm. Basically my my ask here would be that there would, or the committee's ask would be that there would be a, a painted line on the on the uh, great graded section of the of the drawbridge. Any comments or great idea uh, came up out of that uh, out of that one meeting? Somebody from. Cornell or someplace took a look at the satellite pictures of the bridge and came up with a similar right. idea. Yes. You know, I think uh, just as someone who uh, rides a bike on occasion, but I walk a great deal and I, of course I drive a car. Um, I, I, every time I cross the canal on the bridge and there's a biker around, I get extremely nervous because of the uh, how constrained the space is, and especially for the cyclists. Um, do you have you all ever thought about the idea of recommending uh, the that instead of people riding a bike over the bridge, that they that everyone actually dismount and walk their bike over the bridge? I've actually I will share one other observation. Uh, there was one day I was uh, watching a, a biker cross going towards the beach and the lane there that's demarked for the cycling, for cyclists, is so narrow that I was surprised her pedals were not actually clipping the curb as she was pedaling across. It's very, that's, it's very dangerous there. Mm -hmm. That's my observation. I'll yes, share. yeah, yeah. We, our committee, the committee is aware of that that area there. I, I ride it frequently, and I, I am aware of it uh, intimately, and know that there is that, that there is a um, a constraint for for the for the cyclist there. Yeah, the shoulder, the space for the cyclist cyclist is probably less than twenty four inches at that point. So exactly, and I, yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think that is. I don't think that's a safe uh, environment for cyclists. Mm -hmm. Myself. <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's it's a challenging um, the the bridge the bridge presents uh, some challenges for uh, for cycling, um, and as as Chip mentioned earlier, we're seeing a lot of folks still riding uh, on on the sidewalk across yep. the bridge, so. I don't know that this is the best solution. I wanted to throw it out for us to discuss it and maybe we can continue to flush this out. I know that Rehoboth Beach has been working on uh, making changes. Of course, they have a, a much wider drawbridge and a much more area to work with. Um, my 
I believe my, I, I believe they're putting the bike lane, the bike lanes on one side of the bridge with traffic going in, in both directions. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, bike, bike traffic going in both directions, but only on one side of the bridge. And my, the concept plan that I, that I looked at showed um, a separation between the bike path and, and the bridge. They have some right. type of a, a flexible bollard dicky type thing attached to the bridge that does provide a little buffer. Think about a foot and a half to two foot of buffer between the cyclist and the, and the, and the motorists. So we have nothing like that to work with, so. Right. I, yeah, okay. Do you see the chat? There's a, a comment from Sumner Crosby. He says, what yes. about Shara's across the bridge? I did see it. I was going to wait till the next item or the next okay. topic to, to, to bring that up, but thank you. Uh, and then the final item, um, again, would be asking Del Dot to increase the painting. And I believe this would be Del Dot and not the city, uh, adding more Shero's to uh, those four major roads identified that are all state roads. Uh, I was visiting Newark yesterday, which is a, another bike friendly community. And I, I like what they've done. They've, they've outlined their Shero's, uh, they've been, outlined in a green box. So it really stands out on, on their streets. Uh, I think that moving forward, I think I like that idea. Uh, uh, and it does, it does identify the road as a road that's being shared by, um, for, it identifies it to the motorists that's a road shared by cyclists and the cyclists have the right to, to ride in the road. Uh, and I think that's for particularly on Savannah Road where there's parallel parking, there's no bike lane whatsoever. This is the, the best approach uh, for, for, for cyclists. Don, up there in uh, Newark, you said that was Newark where you were, is that correct? Uh, yes. It, yes. Were, were those, that, those markings with the green paint, I guess it is, uh, were they, uh, do you know those state roads or city roads there? I was on Main Street, so I'm not sure. I believe that's a, a city road, but I'm not um, sure. I think Main Street's a state road, is isn't it, it? Because it's got a number. Well, okay. All... Okay. All right, thank you. A lot of other places use the green paint and I think Delaware's just starting. And, and I know Del Dot, their bike ped, program they're always looking for opportunities to to expand it oh, good. so we might be able to get them if, if we agree to be a pilot of sorts they they might agree to help us pay Who pilot knows? town yeah so i'd like to get uh some feedback from the committee on where where the committee sees these improvements and 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 uh maybe a ranking of where we should start. Uh, I'm willing to put together a, an email to my contacts at Del Dot and include loop in the city on that. But are there some priorities here that we want to focus on? I know we can't tackle all 11 of these items this year, but certainly want to keep these on, on our radar. Uh, from the committee, uh, do you see priorities here? One thing I want to mention uh, is we're in our downtown parking committee. We're talking about improving the Schley lot and part of the improvements there involve um, potentially putting some bike racks there because some of the neighbors have noticed around Franklin that folks will use that as sort of a trailhead. Um, so they've been parking on Franklin. So the thought process is, you know, provide Schley one as an opportunity for bike, you know, bikers, but also for people utilizing the downtown. So part of that discussion, as I said, is um, involving the placement of some some bike racks. So, uh, Amory, our next meeting is next is Monday, right? So Monday, I don't know, Don, 8 if, Monday at eight thirty. If, if folks want to attend, it's, it's it's not a huge part of the you know discussion as such, but it, we we do talk about the the placement. We have talked about the placement to an extent. Um, you know, it's just in the committee stage still with that. And there's okay. a conceptual plan from Charlie O'Donnell's firm that Correct. you could share with 
the committee here. Andrew, I've, I've followed those uh, meetings also. And uh, while I like the idea of putting more bike racks there, for a person biking from somewhere, they're not gonna put, use a bike rack for downtown. They're yeah, not gonna downtown. park their bike there and walk into town. But you they're, like it as a they're, concept, they're as try, a trailhead. I, I, I know, I know, I, I, I understand. And that's, that's why it could be used for that part. But, but you don't see necessarily a need for the racks as such. Uh, well, I just don't see because a person who's ridden that far is going to go in and see if they can park in front of Half Full or Mary Vessels Park or whatever. And we all, you know, we know what happens there is there's parking issue in town is tough whether you're in a vehicle or on a bicycle. And I've scoured just the town looking for places where we could put bike racks and there just really isn't any. Jeff, let me ask you a question about that. What is your sense of, as a biker, how, how far do you think a biker is willing to walk from his, his or her place of where he parked his bike to his destination? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you 50 feet. 25, because what you see all up and down 2nd Street, they tie them to the, to the meter post, the trees, fences, because right. that's where they want to be. Correct. You know, a person, a person riding from halfway to Georgetown here, and you're going to take their bike and they're going to park it where, and it's just, it's just the same way. There's just nowhere to park a bike in town. So, so I guess what you're saying is that bikers are just like car drivers if with respect to wanting to park right in front of the restaurant or the store that they're going to be shopping in, they don't want to have to walk. From... Exactly. And, and, okay. and a great, a great uh, proof of that is the bike corral on Gills Neck Road, which is rarely used. I have a, yeah, but I'm going to make a suggestion to you all about that. Um, and that gets to uh, the issue of signage. You know, that spot for that location is a great location, but it's easily overlooked. And I think that there could be something done to improve, draw people's attention that, hey, there is an asset there. We can park our bikes there. And, you know, it could be, it could get better use. And I, and I agree. Any, anything we can do to provide signage or whatever is good, but at I, in front of Half Full and at Mary Vessels Park, there's signs there stating, if the racks are full, please use the bike corral. Right, so, I understand. I, I think, mm -hmm. Tim, Tim, I overlooked one of the items under the outreach and education, and it's item number three. Uh, one of the uh, improvements for, and goals for this year was to improve the info board at the bike corral to include a locked panel, uh, similar to the uh, locked panel at the library trailhead that could include bicycling and city information. I uh, see. I believe that was was constructed by, I think it was an Eagle Scout project. Uh, forget the name of the Eagle Scout. Uh, but I think within our budget, we can purchase a, a locked panel to, to be included uh, at that location. But I do agree with Chip's comments. Uh, I, I have not found, and I know that the parking area, the, the bike corral has been used for a staging area for some, right. some time off and on. So that does detract from, from cyclists, but it does amaze me that it's not utilized more. It's an ideal spot to park, you know, several, maybe a hundred bikes if necessary. How do we get people to park there and walk across the street to the downtown district? Uh, I think there is some some similarity with our behavior with with driving and and maybe with cycling too. So right. human behavior is always interesting. Yes, um, but you uh, want people to bike into town as opposed to drive into town. So I think maybe if you, if you gave up one parking spot, a metered spot, and made bike racks more convenient in in the center of town. Yeah, Sumner just made a similar comment to that. You could fit 10, he makes the comment that you could fit 10 bikes in one parking spot. I think the merchants might scream if we started taking car parking out to put in. I mean, I, I think. We, yeah, I, I know from the 
previous committee chair that they had to twist arms to get the space in front of half full for a bike rack several years ago. So um, that's a that's a big that's a big ask, Andrew. But I think it's and and I, I love I love the idea of, of of utilizing a space for 10, 10, 10 bikes. Well, let's 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 stop for a second and just talk about this, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, Andrew's working on this downtown parking committee, as you all know, and uh, uh, there is this uh, opportunity to, Andrew can speak to this better than I can, certainly, but there is this idea of uh, the parking lot that's on the m and bank would be reconfigured, improved with better lining and so forth. And Andrew, am I correct that there would be some accommodation for a bike rack somewhere on that lot? Or is there not? I don't think I we've talked means, about it, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't find a spot. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't recall that being part of the discussion, but um, it might be worth looking, seeing if there's a footprint. Well, again, then that takes me back to Ms. what Chip was speaking about. Is that parking lot too far away for our bikers to walk? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I think the problem with know. drivers and bikers is they want to park right on Second Street, right in front of where they want to go. And I, I, you know what we need? Here's the answer: we need valet bike parking. There you go. We need. That's what we need. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm gonna. Yeah. Hi, we can hire Andrew's sons, and they can be the valets. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the, I mean, potentially the racks, the lifts, maybe we get some lifts. Yeah, yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. I have a little more faith in cyclists being able to walk, say, two blocks Thank to get to their destination instead of having to park right in front of it. Right. So, so Tim, does, so I, so let me make sure I understand. Hmm? Who was that? Go ahead, Bob. I was just saying, if you want to get the people to go to the Gills Neck Road bike corral, they've got to know where it is. That's right. Like, and something about that particular lot, get everything else that's stuck in there all the time out. Yeah. If you want people to park their bikes in there, you can't have a dump truck in there. That's correct. Uh, I think it's a great idea to put a take one spot from if, if the M&T bank lot ever comes to fruition and put a bike rack in there. I mean, that's a half a block to Second Street. That I think would be close enough, but people that's have to know. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> Tim, Tim, to go to yeah. your question to me on that was, no, that's not too far, the M&T lot. And go back before when the uh, downtown business parking would meet uh, live pre-COVID. Yeah. I went to the meetings and I was a strong proponent of bicycle parking there and when we there, it was when we were talking about the garage also which right. is not going to happen at least in the short term and it became just to take over the parking lot i was a strong proponent for adding bicycle parking right there I'll but since we've gone virtual it i it's not the same for me as, sure. a, as a as a person to be able to have that input i'll, I'll raise i'll raise that on monday because it's, thank you, thank it's you. a very good um and is that a, is Sumner's estimation about right? Ten, Don, do you think right? Ten, ten bikes per car spot oh, is about right. E easily, yeah. If you look at um, the rack in front of uh, half full uh, with bikes on both sides, you can easily put five bikes on either side of that bike rack. Yes. I have another idea. I'll throw out. Um, the city also has a park existing parking lot on third street that backs up to those same buildings that serve second street. And it has been said, and I'm not, I don't know if this is factual, but it, I've heard it said that that parking lot is underutilized by cars. And if that is true, it's quite possible that there would be an opportunity for a bike rack to be introduced in that lot. And help me out, Andrew, uh, is I know there's a little alley that cut, I'll call it an alley, a little walkway that connects the parking area to Second Street. Does that come right to the city parking lot there or? That's the M&T, that does come up to M&T, right by where the, um, 
the right. service window is. But, but it comes like right between. So it's not, it's a stone's throw from the city parking lot. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's right, it's right there. Okay. So that would be, you could accomplish that possibly as soon as Amory can acquire and put together a rack, you know, <laughs> in her spare well, time. <laughs> I, I love that idea. Uh, thanks for that, uh, for that, because I think utilizing, I mean, I see the bike rack being on the city property, not on the private property that's there. Yes. Uh, I think it's an awesome idea. Thanks, thanks for your input, Tim. Um, You're welcome. Uh, are there any other items that um, that I missed that you'd like to uh, include as to improvements for bicycling and pedestrian um, safety in the city? And Maria, the the those silent um, the silent policeman things are they low budget enough that they if these are a good idea, do they, should we think about that as a budget item or is it low value? Enough it, it's, it it's a low enough that, that it can go in. Um, I think in the past we've paid for it out of this committee's budget. So it's gotta be less than a couple thousand dollars. So. Okay. And you find those to be effect, effective, Don? Um, I mean, just based on anecdotal evidence, yes, I think they do calm traffic. Uh, they provide, um, I think if I'm crossing in a busy intersection, I, I think that provides a little additional, not protection necessarily, but just it, it does seem to, to control the traffic flow somewhat. Maybe that's a better use for the kids. A little more awareness. Yeah, awareness, right. Tim, Tim, that's a better use for the kids. I'll just have Bodie stand out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, I might, uh, may I make a suggestion about that also? Uh, that might be something we want to talk to Chief Spell about, to just get his, his input as a law enforcement officer and how he- His policeman costs a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> yeah. And these signs aren't unionized. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all for this discussion. It's been very, uh, really uh, productive tonight. Uh, thanks for your time. I know the meeting went, went rather long, but I, I thanks Anne Marie for your time tonight uh, and all committee members, council members, and, and guests for their input. Uh, our next meeting is on March 23rd. Uh, uh, Anne Marie is. And did you notice we do have a silent policeman on the? <laughs> <laughs> we do. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did notice that that Jonathan was. He joined us so silently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, and thank you to Jonathan for also being being present tonight. Uh, uh, so anyway, our next meeting is March 23rd. Uh, Anne Marie has asked uh, Charlie or Donald from the from GMB to, to come and report on um, his sidewalk assessment study, and we'll uh, you know that'll be one of the items on the agenda, and hopefully we can move some of these other items forward as well. Don, I had one um, thing to bring up that potentially could be an agenda item for next time. Um, I think we had talked. To couple of meetings ago about the fact, I think this committee used to be part of traffic safety, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, it never was. It never was, okay. Well, the, the idea was brought up that maybe we combine <laughs> with traffic, <laughs> maybe we combine with traffic safety. Um, so there are two pending, uh, I guess, requests you call them, Anne-Marie. One, one is for, um, I think we already mentioned uh, a speed limit reduction in ship carpenters. And the other is for a stop sign in Mariner's Retreat. Where, where Pilot Town Village goes into Mariner's Retreat. Okay, so I'm just proposing to the committee, if you, if you all are comfortable just having that as part of the discussion and then for recommendation to council, that's fine, we can do that. If you'd rather not, Tim, Tim and I can be a committee of two, a uh, traffic safety committee of two. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave that um, if we want to maybe make a call on that now, whether you want to take that on or not, we're absolutely fine either way with um, as far as the committee is concerned. I'll, I'll add it to the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, I think it, it has been brought up in the past and I, I don't think the committee took a 
took a vote on whether to combine or, or to be part of, uh, you know, or to, or to add that to our, our responsibilities. So, okay. so Henry, if they were willing to take it on, how would that work? Would we provide them like sort of photos of what, uh, for the stop sign, for example, and for them to kind of make determinations mm -hmm. on that piece. Okay. And then the yeah, other and, is- And we probably usually like stuff like that, we'll have Charlie look at. Sometimes we'll have Matt Carter from the T-Square the Center okay. um, and, you know, provide a, a recommendation. And the other is Ship Carpenters wants to go down to 15 miles an hour. So you wouldn't even get an e-bike through there with at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they want to do. So. You can go faster on the trail. <laughs> Andrew, are you talking about a stop sign uh, on 4th Street before entering Mariners? No, um, oh, okay. Seagull. Oh, okay. On Seagull, the back side of it. Get it. No, we have enough on 4th. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrew, correct me how, if I'm wrong, but how it would work is this committee would just discuss the benefits or not of it, then Chief Spell would need still need to do a traffic study. Is that right? I don't or... know. I, I, one Ship Carpenter Square is so small. I don't know that there that we'd need to do a, a speed okay. study there. Um, okay. And then for the stop sign, I think you're looking more at engineering. Um, what the engineering standards are for whether it's an appropriate application. Yeah. Okay, so if you if, if we're willing to discuss that in the next committee meeting, that would be great. It'd be much appreciated. And then we'll take the, those uh, discussions then forward to council after that. Okay, well, um, well hey, we'll, one more question. Don, I know you said the meeting is on the this 23rd. Is your last question. <laughs> okay, and I promise. Uh, uh, the meeting is on the 23rd of February, but you didn't say no, the March. time. March. March. Oh, I'm sorry, March. See, I got that yeah. wrong too. At six. They're always at six. Well, I wasn't sure. I was wondering if they have well, some flexibility here. Okay, <laughs> but it is six o'clock. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, the meeting dates Good. are, uh, Tim, the meeting dates are uh, listed on the uh, on the agenda for today's for, for tonight's meeting. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that. I just was throwing your curveball. <laughs> yeah, we, changed, we changed the time from seven to six uh, two years ago because I don't, I don't know why we did, but anyway, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Marta, thanks for your service. Oh, See you out on the you. road. <laughs> okay. On this trail. Take care, Marta. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you, Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good.